so thank, thanks for the intro. And I guess a lot of people in Africa know a bit about you. Um, I know you've been on the scene for a while. You, you've been uh, in a lot of Africa Championship, Commonwealth Games, and all that. So we'll talk about that. So we'd like to just talk about pres and present. You know, so this whole 2020 season has been completely written off. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know some athletes have started running this weekend, but for most athletes, um, a lot of the competition they're planning for this year has been put off. So how have you been coping and how have you coped so far with the lockdown? Yeah, I mean, I think I think for me, the one thing that has been um, persistent in the fact is that this is a situation that everyone is going through. So not just athletes, but everyone is experiencing the same thing. So it kind of gives me a little bit of humility and gratefulness for the fact that one, I'm healthy and I'm alive. <laughs> and two, really putting things into perspective and understanding that although I wanted to compete this year, although I wanted to go to Tokyo this year, there's more that's important at this moment, at this current time. And it's really, about putting the focus on that and putting the emphasis on that. So I think that's really shaped the way I'm, I'm approaching this year. And I've just been very grateful and relaxed as far as, you know, just waiting and patient for next year to start. But really it's, it's, just, it's just been really trying to put everything into perspective and focus on what's more important, which is my health and my safety right now. Yeah, so, I mean, that's paramount, you know, because without being healthy, uh, you know, you can actually do the sport. But then, um, have you had any, you know, help or assistance from the Ghana Olympic Committee or the Ghana Athletics Federation so far? Has there been contacts with you? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, they've, as far as on the health side, they've been advising us and, you know, providing advisory on what we need to do for the next step forward. And fortunately for the I, the athletes who are I, on IOC scholarship, and I don't know if you know about this, but yes. um, the it has been rolled over until next year. So we're still getting that funding that we're getting throughout um, 2021. So as far as the support, I mean, that's the support that we've got. We're, we, those who are on the IOC scholarship are continuing to get our scholarship through 2021. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, everything remains the same. So are you on that scholarship? Are yes. Are getting the funds as well? Yes. Okay. So it's been rolled over for another year for you? It's been rolled over for another year, luckily, yeah. Okay. But also you work, right? So you're director of community engagement at Special Olympics Florida. So is mm -hmm. that full-time work or is it part-time? Yeah, it's full time, um, and that's what I do outside of the sport. Ah, uh, okay. So now um, I know you finished school mm -hmm. and you're working full time, but you're still competing as well. So mm -hmm. do you have? Are you? Do you have a professional contract? No, I don't. I actually don't. And I think I think the the. I mean, I don't know how much you know about this track and field world but I'm not in an event that everyone wants to watch and everyone wants to put money into. And I think also in this day and age, there's a shift in what's happening in track and field. And so there's not really a lot of money out there in the sport. And if you think about it in terms of both had most of the money in the sport anyway, and now he's gone. So I think there's been a shift in people having contracts anyway, and the contracts that are out there are not sustainable enough for athletes to live off of that, at least in track and field, I think. Oh, wow. I guess that's the reality of a lot of the athletes, especially yeah. from developing countries like Africa. Yeah, yeah. even yeah. even in the U.S. I, I mean, you look at the U.S. athletes and it's, I would say, only a top 10% of people who are actually competing get sponsorship. There's a whole bunch of people who are talented, um, are able to hit the qualifying mark, but they're not getting the same exposure and the same, you know, contracts as so so to speak so it's i mean it's the same across the board and i think it's more of a problem or a reflection of the sport not so much the location and the athletes yeah and you know f track and field naturally is not in africa it's not a money spinner you know like football or rugby or other sports right but then and also attracting corporate companies in africa to support track and field has been a difficult situation right. even for the Confederation of Africa Athletics. So, yeah. but how do you, um, how do you, um, are you preparing for Tokyo, for instance? 
do you have Ghanaian companies that are interested in you being their ambassador or, you know, modeling for their product or, no, you know, no, in any not. role at all? No, I mean, as far as training, training, um, on the training side, I'm doing what I can. I have a coach. I have all those things that I need to do. I, um, I have physical therapy and everything like that. But as far as on the sponsorship side, I think there's so much opportunity for brands, um, but they're not really, they're seeing athletes in a very limited way. And so for me, when a brand looks at me, they're just looking at, oh, she's a triple jumper or, you know, she's a triple jumper from Ghana and that's it. But they're not looking at me as the whole individual. What can I actually bring to your table? I graduated from an Ivy League university, one of the top universities in the world. I have sense. I can do other things for your company. I have so much that I can bring to the forefront of your company. But a lot of times, unfortunately, companies don't see that in athletes. And then it's on the reverse side, athletes don't see that in themselves. So it's difficult for athletes to even position themselves in a way to make, an, uh, to make a decision to even gain an opportunity to have some sort of sponsorship you know, with a corporate entity. But I think on the continent, I, I think they're missing, we're missing out a lot on the talent that's out there that, you know, the opportunities that we can gain, the exposure that we can gain from athletes. And it's just, it's just non-existent right now. I mean, because I'm looking at it this way that naturally, track of, no, not track and field, but athletes are natural ambassadors, right? Mm -hmm. So, because they, you know, they're visible and a lot of people watch them. But in Africa, a lot of that is just entertainment and, you know, movies. Right. For instance, in Ghana, if you put a billboard of one of the athletes that won medals for the country, yeah. almost no one would recognize mm -hmm. them, right? But if you put the Ghana Wood athletes, um, artist, or yeah. the Shatawales, the, yeah. you know, the Nollywood, you know, everybody knows them. Right. So, and, th and that's a problem. And that's the problem. And I think also another thing that I noticed is that you would think that the entertainers in the country would kind of want to partner with, you know, professional athletes on, the, on that scale because the Olympics is coming up. You know, why not do something in collaboration to also expand your brand, but also to work together with the athletes? And you would think that that would be the case a lot of the time. But it's not like that in Ghana. In America, if you're a top athlete, you know all the entertainers. You know, Serena Williams was in Beyonce's video. You know what I mean? But in Ghana, it's 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 very different in terms, of, and it's the same in, in the continent. And I think is that the problem is that there's a lack of um, understanding of the opportunity here yeah. and how it can really build your brand. And I think we're we have a very limited view of what we think. So you see the Olympics, and I mean, the opening ceremony alone is the most watched event in the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? What is it to say to have I partner with this athlete who's in the opening ceremony, who's bearing the flag, you know what I mean? And so there's just so much opportunity, but I think there's a lack of, um, there's a lack of knowledge on how to go about leveraging these opportunities or maybe a lack of desire.